I titled tonight, Poisoning Your Well Takes You Out of God's Best. Oh, don't all shout me down at once. Say, I'm here to help you. I'm here. She's here. She's here to help us. Okay. Poisoning your well takes you out of God's best. For a long time now, I've been saying that God is cleaning up the church. Some of you guys have heard me. Some of you have heard me. If you, if you listen, if you're listening to the live streamings, if you come, if you come here and you... Over the months, God is cleaning up the church. This is a good thing. Say, that's a good thing. Because when God cleans up the church, he cleans me up too. Right? Rob is from, right? So God's cleaning up the church. Search my heart, O God, and see if there be any wicked thing within me, within us. That should be our constant prayer. Your are res received after great warfare is won. I'm going to say it again because I want you to understand this. Great achievements are received realize that there's going to be a war to try to stop you from receiving that great achievement. To, to actually cross over that line, there's going to be a struggle, a war, some kind of an opposition, but great achievement. We're all following, yes? Spiritual miscarriages. You know, what about a spiritual miscarriage? You know, sometimes people just think a, mis a, a, a miscarriage, but what about a spiritual miscarriage, right? Think about that. Things you were supposed to walk in, things you were supposed to have by now. But somewhere along the line, there was a spiritual miscarriage that happened because you allowed your mind to go to a place that you should have never had it go to. Because you allowed your heart to prosper, not to prosper, you allowed your heart to come into agreement with something you should have never done so. Right? You allowed your heart to get bitter or to get, or to get uh, you know, sour, to get angry. You allowed your heart to remain in a place you should have never let it. So then what happens? A spiritual miscarriage Lives are ruined. Children go astray. Marriages are broken. You know, health is, is removed from you. Ident identity and destiny gets robbed from you because of a spiritual miscarriage. Something went wrong in the process. Say, it's not going to be on my watch. In my watch, I'm going to be aware and alert. And I'm not going to allow this spiritual miscarriage to take place. Amen? So someone say, hey, help me out tonight because I want to hear everything that, that God has to say. You didn't come here to hear me. You came to hear the Spirit of the living God through me, right? So let every ear be opened and let every heart understand and eyes to be opened to hear the Spirit of God, the truth, so that you can walk in the high calling of God and not be shortchanged. Amen. So if you take yourself out of the game, if you take yourself out of the race, the Bible talks about the race, Right? If you take yourself out of the race, you have no one to blame but you. Uh, when you see God's glorious outpouring, but as an outsider looking in. You don't want to be an outsider looking in. You don't want to take yourself out of the race. You don't want to let an offense creep into your heart and then harbor there to where you remove yourself out of what God placed you in. Are we all following? Say, God is cleaning up the church. God doesn't bring me out of something to leave me in a place of floundering, struggling, or in confusion. Right? Every place of confusion, grumbling and without complaining. We are to do all things without grumbling and complaining. It is a choice. Say, it is a fair it brings. I I'm going to say it again because I'm telling you, I got. we are going to stop rejecting the call of God, the call of God on your life, it brings a level of warfare. The call of God on your life is going to bring that warfare. Why? Because the devil sees the potential in you and he tries to put all that warfare on you in an effort to cause you to stop, to quit, and to not go forward. And let's, let me just tell you something. It works to many people that don't have eyes to see what they should be seeing. But let me tell you something right now, that if you belong to this church, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure you don't fall into that trap, to make sure that if you start falling into that trap, that we're going to continue to pick you up and continue to shake you up if we have to. And you know, I'm not kidding here. The opposition, the anointing on your life, it attracts an opposition. It attracts ridicule. It, it attracts it attracts naysayers, right? You lose friends. You lose people. You lose family members. They don't understand you. 
They don't understand the call of God. They'll mock you. They'll ridicule you. Why? Because they want you to shut up. They want you to be normal like everybody else. But you're not called to be normal. You're called to walk in the high calling of God. And you're called to walk unoffended but yet powerful. Say, I'm going to walk unoffended but yet powerful. Amen? Wow. Judas was one handpicked by Jesus, wasn't he? He was handpicked by Jesus because he took the devil's bait. See, Satan doesn't have any power over you other than what you give him. And then I give him that power through my thoughts, through my emotions, right? But let every thought be in alignment with the will and the power of God. Let every emotion be in alignment with the will and the power and the word of God. When we do that, when we do that, we don't allow the enemy to rob us of what God was trying to give us. See, if you don't carry the prophetic decree, that prophetic release over your life, someone else will. Wake up, somebody. Because if you don't carry, in other words, if you don't allow it to carry you into what God has called you to do, right? If you don't allow that prophetic decree that God has spoken over your life to actually work in your life, then you're, somebody else will. Someone else will take it. Someone else will run with it. King Saul abandoned his post. And David was ready to step up. Don't be King Saul, but abandon his post. Amen. Song of Solomon 2.15. It says, catch for us the foxes. The little foxes that ruin the vines. Listen to this. Are while the vineyards are in bloom. You start seeing the fruit. You start seeing the vine having some fruit. What happens? But it's those little foxes that come in. Well, that's not really what she meant. This is what she meant. You know she doesn't like you. You know she favors so-and-so. It's those little foxes that come in that start to torment you, twist your mind, and start to rob from you. They will rob the vine that already started to bloom. You are blooming. Don't let the foxes come and steal from your vine because you heard, you felt, you thought something that wasn't of God, but you were so engaged because in your mind, you're going, oh yeah, but the, you know, this is what happened. This Emotions, emotions, emotions. Are we to be led by our emotions? We are to be led by the Spirit. We are to be led by the Spirit, right? If you want to be strong in the Lord, then you're going to be led by the Spirit and not by an emotion. The minute that you feel like you are upset with somebody, when you're hurt by somebody, you're offended with them. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but you're offended. You can sit there and say, no, I'm not. I just, it's just I got to process this. You're offended. You can sit there and say, oh, no, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hurt. You're offended. If you're hurt, you're offended. People like to just use different words so that they think they're getting away with something. But the bottom line is you're still offended. And the Bible tells us to not be easily offended. And that when we are offended, we're actually on the wrong path. Because that path is going to actually lead to nothing good. Say, nothing good comes from offense. Nothing good comes from offense. The best thing to do is to deal with it, get it right, right? And don't allow it to consume you. Don't let those little foxes rob. That's a little fox. It's a little, it seems small. They all seem small. But if you don't deal with them, they will rob your whole vine. The vine that was just starting to produce. What's a vine? Your life. Your life. You started to have fruit. Started to have favor. You started to see victory. Started to see the anointing. You started to see all the, you started to see yourself go where you knew you were supposed to go. And then what happened? The little foxes came and you allowed them and they started to rob from your vine. The vine that was in bloom. Say, not on my watch. Today my eyes are being opened up. Today my eyes are being opened up. See, it didn't take long for God's people to forget God's goodness. When we forget God's goodness, it doesn't take long for the enemy of our souls to, to taint our minds uh, with all the negativities, right? While they were in Egypt as slaves, think about the Israelites, while they were in Egypt as slaves, they were well cared for. They were well cared for, but they were also slaves. But they were well cared for. They didn't lack food. They had to work like a slave, but they didn't lack food. But one and a half months after leaving Egypt, the children of Israel began to complain because of the lack of food. We're, we are in Exodus 
and in chapter 16, and we're going we're gonna to get to some of these scriptures here in a moment, but Exodus 16, you just turn your Bibles there and, and just and, uh, wait for me there. A month and a half. A month and a half. That's all it took for the children. They left Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea. They had that encounter where God said, you know, that man of the water was bitter. But then God, you know, had Moses put the branch, the wood, the tree in the water and the bitter waters became sweet. And we talked about that on Thursday, how the cross makes everything sweet. We talked, it actually made that bitter water, the waters of Mara, sweet. We talked about the other. Uh, uh, and not only 12 wells, because God's always about the increase, but he also provided palm trees. But not just one palm tree. How many palm trees did he provide? Because God's going to cover you, he's going to shade you, and he's going to well provide for you. Why? He was speaking. God speaking of abundance. The very next chapter, though, the very next chapter, they start to complain to Moses, and they start to complain to Aaron. And they're all grumbling. They're grumbling and they're compel- complaining. But, but grumbling and complaining turns into bitterness. Grumbling and complaining turns into bitterness, and guess what happens? It does poison your well. And when your well becomes poisoned, there's potential for those that are close to you to also have their wells poisoned. How many of you guys have experienced that in your life? Your well got poisoned. You allowed it. You guys are all super saints in this room? Is that it? I see like three hands here, two over here, and one going like this. So for those that are real, (laughs) when the well, when we allow our well to become poisoned, and it's happened to every one of you, at some point in time, a marriage, a spouse that has been cruel, and not just once, but over and over, your heart becomes hard, you get upset, you get bitter, you're angry, it takes some time. And Lord willing, you keep your heart before God and God heals your heart. But during that time, there is a anger, a bitterness. You know, it was something that was done to you. I don't know. I'm sure there's always two sides to a story. And usually we have some involvement in it. But there are times that there really isn't anything that you did to have received what's being received. There, There are times. It doesn't matter. Because if you don't get your well cleaned up, it's going to poison you. And if you don't get your well cleaned up, it's going to poison those around you. And if you don't get your well cleaned up, it will rob from you the very thing God wants to give you. So the Israelites were allowing the murmuring and the grumbling to poison their well. And when their well became poisoned, then it was becoming other people's wells, their hearts. If if the well represents like a heart, if it represents a heart, then it's becoming poison. It's like contagious. You put a piece of rotten fruit in in a bowl, and what happens to the fruit that it's touching? It rots too. They both rot. It's not just the one rotting by itself. The one that's touching the other is rotting. So in other words, you have to be careful with the relationships that are the closest to you. You got to make sure, husband and wife and, and close friends, those relationships that are the closest to you, that you're not becoming a hindrance to one another, but you're actually being a blessing because you're not going to allow what's in you to poison them. So get it cleaned up. Say, I'm getting it cleaned up today. I'm going to get sure that we are allowing in our heart what that, what's good, what's pure, what's best, right? Amen. So God's, God has a plan B. Like if that didn't work out, that I'll just do plan B. There is no plan B in the kingdom of God. I'm just going to say it again. There is no plan B in the kingdom of God. There is God's perfect will, period, exclamation point. There is God's perfect will. Everything else is less than perfect. So what does that mean? Everything else is not God. I don't care how you want to slice it and dice it. I don't care how you want to spin it. And if it's not God's perfect will happening in your life, then it's not God's will. Therefore, there is no plan B. There is only one plan, and it's the plan of God. Am I making sense? Are we all following? You all believing what I'm saying? You're all following? Yes? It's important because I'll tell you, even when we were first saved, we heard that there was, you know, God's plan, and then there's plan B. You know, you can do plan A or plan B, and God was in both of them. And, you know, no, no, no. God's plan is perfect, and so he has a path for you. His His path for you is that you walk in the righteousness of God, right? Righteousness, peace, and joy. The kingdom of God is within us. 
And what is that kingdom? But righteousness, peace, and joy found in the Holy Ghost. It is righteousness, peace, and joy found in the Holy Ghost. Anything that's changed or void of that is not God. It's not the kingdom. Oh, I hope someone's hearing tonight. Good is the enemy of best. Write that down. Good is not really good. Come on. Good is the enemy of best. In other words, if you are going to sit there and say, I am going to be okay. I'm going to be okay with less than. I'm going to settle. God's best. Don't settle. Well, this is okay. This is good. This is good. No, stop. Recognize, I'm, I'm going to walk into the fullness. There is a promised land to be had. There is a promised land to be had. There, there, there is land that God wants to give you. There is spiritual land that God wants to give you. And then there is also physical, practical land that God wants to give you. Church of God, this is the best time to be alive. I've told you this all last year. The best time. I mean it 100%. With everything that comes against the church and the body of Christ. Let you go this way and that way. He says, no, stand. I've got the plan. It's the best plan. It's the only plan. And if you keep your eyes on me, I'm going to take you into the land that's flowing with milk and honey. That's what he was trying to do for the Israelites. That's what he's also bringing unto us, right? And we're going we're gonna to make sure that we walk in it. So now let's look by the hand of the Lord in the, in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of whole assembly with hunger. My goodness, did they have amnesia or something? They just barely left. It's only been a month and a half. It was a month and a half when they said this statement. Can you remember what happened a month and a half ago when it was what you lived in for years and years and years and years? They lived in this for years and years and years. Don't tell me they forgot. No, they chose to look at what was the lack. They chose to look at the lack. But you're not gonna, you're not gonna look at the lack. You're gonna look at the plenty. You're gonna look at the provision. There's always two ways to look at something. Full and overflowing or half empty? So today I'm going to look at, at everything in my life as overflowing. Uh, full and overflowing. Uh, you need to be your own best friend. Stop worrying about, well, there's no one here to encourage me. I have no one to pray for me. Pray for yourself. Encourage yourself. Say, self, I'm going to encourage myself today. I'm getting up and I'm going to encourage myself. Self, you need to look at yourself in the mirror. Say, self, you know you're doing a great job today. I love how you just love the word. Self, you know what? I bless you. You're going to prosper. You're going to succeed in the things that God has called you to succeed. Would you not say that to a friend? Would you not say that to a friend? The person next to you, turn to the person next to you. Self, I'm gonna, I want you to say to them, say, you're going to succeed in the things God pro has already promised you. You're going to succeed. You're, you're going up. God's elevating you. Promotion is coming your way. Okay, now, see how we say that to one another? And do we have any problem saying that to one another? You may not even know the person sitting next to you. Like, you don't even know anything about their life. But you had no problem turning to them and start saying, you're going to be promoted and God's good to you. You're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You had no problem problem doing that with your neighbor why is it we have problems doing it for ourselves why because we're not we're not used to it you know it's something that we're not used to but we need to get used to that we need to we need to bless our spirit that's called blessing your spirit man when you start to bless your spirit man you can't be poisoned it's one way to make sure that your own well is not being poisoned when you speak truth I'm not talking flattery. I'm talking truth. When you speak God's word, you're speaking truth. So you're, what you're doing is you're blessing your spirit, man, Jimmy. You're blessing your spirit, man. Say, all the days of my life, I'm going to live blessed and highly favored. All the days of my life, I'm going to walk as God's, God's child, God's son. I'm God's kid. The crown has been placed upon my head, and I'm going to walk with my head held up high. Who am I? But I'm a son of God. You're going to walk blessed because you are blessed, right? And so when we don't do this, what happens is we can tend to go right into that complaining, which is what happened here. And what did they say? They were all complaining, all grumbling. Oh, that we had died. They wished they would have just died. They wished they would have just died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt because they're remembering 
the provision that God gave them. Somebody's laughing. Somebody's sitting home. It's hidden home. It, says, it is hidden home tonight. <laughs> we know. We know. He's pointing out who it was as if we don't know. It's funny. But look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. At the very end of verse 8. Because they're all complaining, you know, that you know they don't have this. They don't have that. They don't have food. But when you complain, listen to the end of verse 8. Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. Right? I hear some people, whoa. Yeah, exactly. Just like when we sin, we don't we sin against God. Come on, if a four year old can I talked that to my granddaughter the other day. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this funny story. My granddaughter the other day, I, te- I tell her, I said, you know, when we sin, well, I said, What is sin? Let's talk the basics. What is sin? Sin is all the bad things we do. Exactly. I said I said, Abby, you know when we sin, we we sin against God. And she said, Oh, okay. So later on she she was gonna play piano. She's gonna mess around on the piano. So I decided to jump on the piano and, and try to mess around with the piano. And so I'm playing, you know me, I'm going to go in the spirits. I'm singing in the spirit. I have no idea what I'm playing, but I'm just singing in the spirit. And then it's her, she's like, it's my turn. It's my turn. No, no, it's my turn. Okay, go ahead. So she's, we're both sitting on the bench and she's doing this and all those things start. And literally this is what she said. She goes, and when you sin, you sin against God. <laughs> I'm looking at her, I'm like, but it sunk in. Regardless of that's probably not, the, I mean, the song that she chose to sing. The point is, is that sh- it sunk in. When we sin, we sin against God. But when we grumble and complain, I just read it to you. See, your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. So sometimes we don't equate the grumbling, the complaining as doing it against the Lord. But I just read it to you. So my heart is always to, you know, really to teach and to help each and every one of us to, to rise up and to be mature saints, to be mature saints. Because, you know, what I find a lot is in, the, in, the, um, in Christianity, you know, sometimes, I mean, Christians could be so fickle. They love you one minute, they hate you the next. That's not okay, guys. That is not okay. Why? Because they're being led by emotions. Instead of letting the Word of God lead them, they're being led by emotions. So we can't be like that. We've got to allow God to mature us. And so when we come to church, we have a great time. God, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you, we're going to preach the pure, unadulterated word of like attacks. And they're trying to get you to move into the flesh so that you don't move into the flesh. That's my job. That's why I'm doing this. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So the Lord will test his children to see if they will do what they are told. If we will do what he is if a heart is not tested, the head tests my heart. Then listen to this. Proven loyalty leads to promotion. When you're loyal, choose to stay loyal. Loyal to the Lord. Lo- placed you in. And don't let every offense. Here, one amen over here. <laughs> so let's go back here. Let's go back to Exodus 16, but verses 4 and 5. The Lord said to Moses, manna. It's manna, manna from heaven. Do you know that even, like they literally received manna from heaven. Like it was manna fallen down from heaven, right? Here's amen, say manna from heaven. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them. I'm going to rain manna every day, but a certain amount so that the people will have to go out, but I'm going to bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Why? Because on the seventh day they rested. Right? So God says, I'm going to test them. I'm going to see if they're going to trust me. Or are they going to start hoarding it? Are they going to start acting like paupers and just taking more than I've told them to? See, God is always trying to test the hearts to see if we're truly loyal to him. And when you, and when you have passed that test, then God's going to promote you. He wants to promote his children. But if he promotes someone that's not ready, what is that going to equal? A disaster. Yeah. And we're not into disasters, are we? Okay, so he doesn't tempt us. But he tests us. Let's say that again. He does not tempt, but he does test. In James 1, 13 through 16, if we can put that scripture up. James 1, 13 through 16. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. When, some, when you're being tempted, the intent is to cause you to sin. That's the difference between tempting and testing. When you're being tempted, someone is, the motive 
is to cause you to sin. God never does that. He never has a motive to try to entrap you to sin. The testing is to see if you're ready for God's advancement. That's all the testing is about. The testing is, okay, I see, I hear, I know who they are. I see, I hear, I know who they are. And I'm about ready to bless them in such a great way. And this test is, if they pass this test, they're going to receive. They're going to be on the other side of this test. And they're going to receive all that they have believed God for. The test is unto your promotion. Say, the test is unto my promotion. Say, I'm going to pass the test. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So James 1, 13 through 16 says, let no one say when he is tempted that I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. When you're drawn away by your own desires and enticed. See how here we have our own desires and then the devil is ready to entrap us. But it always starts with our own desires, our own feelings. So you can't blame everything on the devil. It was first a sin problem, guys. Before it was the devil, it was a sin problem. Let's get that straight. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin, then when it's full grown, it brings forth death. See the progression? So we're going to say, Lord, I really want to walk right. I want to walk mature. I want to walk as a holy vessel, a holy saint. Lord, teach me. And the minute that I start going astray, Lord, call me back. Bring me back. Speak to me. Shout if you need to. But I don't want to be led astray by my own emotions. And then quickly, um, uh, Jeremiah 17.10. Jeremiah 17.10, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart, and I examine the mind. I search the heart. And I test, some versions say examine, the mind to give to man every, to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. In other words, the thing, your deeds are going to, if your deeds are good, they're going to amount to God's blessing, right? And our deeds. But he says he tests the mind and he searches the heart. And in Romans 2, 6, it says God will repay each one according to his deeds deeds. So isn't this a good thing? Because when we align ourselves with what God has for us, God is good about keeping his good scores, right? Like, like he's good about rewarding the things that you have been faithful in. Do you guys know that? Have you seen that in your life where God is so faithful and you know that you walk in favor with God? How many of you know you walk in favor with God? I want to see your hands. If you honestly know that you walk in favor with God, Okay, praise God. Praise God. Is there anyone in here that doesn't know that? That you walk in? Praise God. Oh, I love to see that. I haven't seen any hand raised that did not know that they walked in favor with God. And that's a beautiful thing. Because, see, our mind must be right there, like knowing that God is good and wants to bless us. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift every good and perfect gift comes from the father of heavenly lights. In other words, every good and perfect gift that he's given you, it's, it has come from God. Now God will use people. He uses people to accomplish his purposes. That is true, but it comes from God first and foremost, right? And God wants to bless his children. He, he wanted to bless the Israelites and he's, he's patient. He's long suffering. You know, he's very patient. And he went on and on and on waiting and, and teaching and thank God. Cause he does the same for us. So I mentioned before about Saul and David, right? Saul re- was, or it, yeah, was rejected as king. Why? Because of his disobedience. Saul's decline, though. Okay, Saul's decline is was matched by David's rise. Sometimes you just need to stop and let something sink in. Saul's decline was matched by David's rising or his, his, his rising up. How many in this room would say, God is raising me up. Somebody was declining. God is, but if God is raising me up and I'm Lord, I say, yes, here I am. I don't want to be yesterday's man or woman. I want to be not just today's, 
but to the end of my life here on earth. You know, right now, I'm going to have everybody stand up. Because I feel this is a very important moment right now. Because there are some people in this room that would say, Saul's decline, that was me. And you feel forgotten and left out, and you feel basically bypassed. I'm not going to ask you to come up. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But I am going to ask you to do some business with God. And I see who you are. I see, I see a number of you. Some of you are so humble, you're raising your hand anyway, even though I didn't ask you to, and God bless you. But right now, for those that believe that they were like Saul in a past season of life, God doesn't want you to stay in that season. We do serve a merciful God. And all it takes is for you to recognize, my gosh, I abdicated my position. I took myself out. I removed myself. Or I allowed, I allowed my heart to become bitter and angry and ugly. And now I've just settled for second best, thinking it was best. But it's really the enemy of God's best because there is no plan B. And you feel like you've been left behind and left out. And you just felt like you had to settle because you blame yourself and you continue to blame yourself. It's time to stop. It is time to stop. God wants to use each and every one of you in your calling. He wants to use you today. The yesterdays of your life, the mistakes that were made, it's under the blood. I'm quite sure you have repented over and over and over. If you haven't, do it now. Repent. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I want to not be yesterday's man, woman. I want to be today and for the rest of my life. I want to walk in the calling you've given me. So right now, let every Saul spirit right now, and I'm talking about those right now, come off of you. Let your identity that was once an identity of Saul right now be removed from you. I command, no, I cancel that. I rebuke that. I say it goes right now. For God says, I am waiting for you to rise up and be the David that I've called you to be. I've calling you to rise up and be a warrior, to be a worshiper, to be a man of God, a woman of God, to be kings and to be priests today. Uh, recognize today is the day of salvation. How many are going to receive it? Yeah, there you go. Lift your hands up right now. Let God come upon you. Say, Lord, I'm going to choose to do things your way from this moment on, this moment on, this moment on. Lord God, Cause me to walk in the high calling of God. Cause me to walk in the high calling of God. I don't want to be like the Israelites where they were constantly complaining, constantly complaining, and they took themselves out. I don't want to be like King Saul that had a, a bitter, ugly heart full of greed, full of lies and compromise. I don't want to be like that. I want to be like David, King David. King David was not perfect. King David did plenty of mistakes. But, but... King David consistently repented and had a humble heart before God. That's all he's asking for is have a humble heart before God. That's all he's asking for from you. Just have a humble heart before me, saith the Lord. Just be humble. Just know that I am your strength. Just know that I have not given up on you. Just know that I want to use you today right where you are at. Just know that today is the day of salvation. Just know that today is the day of salvation. Amen. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the last scripture is when you pass the test. Say, I passed the test. I'm going to see the glory of God. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. We're going to end this right here. Look at verse 10. It says, Now it came to pass as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness. And behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. God's glory is appearing in your life. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You're going to walk out changed. You're going to walk out healed and whole. You're going to walk out with the mind of Christ. You're going to walk out with a renewed strength. Because you're going to walk out full, filled, filled, filled with the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give him the praise.